Next up, uh, Natalie Coleman is a freshman civil engineering student minoring in Hispanic studies for community engagement. Despite her American name, she is very much Hispanic, coming from a border town with Spanish as her first language. When she's not erasing lines of program coding, she's editing and re-editing her short stories. Her favorite font is Garamond, and her favorite movie is 500 Days of Summer. She also doesn't believe in matching socks. Please welcome Natalie. Howdy. My story centers on Evelina and Esteban, two young Latinos living in the slum area of a small border town. They are artists. They participate in their school's art club and make murals on abandoned store walls during the weekend. In this chapter, Evelina discovers something that will affect her and Esteban. And in order to cope, they continue doing what they love most. I will be reading chapters three and five from my short story. Tres Niños. I arrived home to the sound of Angelica crying. The washer was tumbling and Mama was snoring. It was pitch black save for the novella flickering on the television. In this episode, Juan Carlos had discovered that he was in fact not a twin, but a triplet, and that his third brother was framed for the murder of his wife, who was in fact kidnapped by the second brother, who is now missing. Typical family life. Mama must have dozed off after putting in the laundry. She had worked a double shift in the diner, and after having three kids, her ears were now immune to the sound of a crying baby. I was not immune. Angelica was fussing around with her cuna. She had been going at it for a while, her face cherry and sweaty, her usual screeches were muted to hiccuping whispers. She kicked her peach-sized feet and hands as I picked her up. Adru, adru. It was instinct, the same calming tune that lulled me to sleep 19 years ago. I sang her a lullaby. My accent was showing. I wondered if Angelica would have an accent. Leo, my younger brother, used to have one but it was stripped away every time his teacher scolded him for saying chocolate milk instead of chocolate milk. He was lucky that I taught him English. I never had a tutor. Angelica nestled herself comfortably between my chest and armpit. Her hair was light brown, practically golden, her skin beige. Mama said that she could pass for a gringa, and I hoped she could. Eres americana, I whispered to her. She didn't have to fake her way. She had a birth certificate certificate, proudly made in the USA, no stumbling around for English words, no holding on to numbers because it was the only symbol on the board that she could understand, no expiration date. I did. Mama had told me that I had to leave soon. My visa had been expired for two years and the renewal process had been slow and shaky and then it had stopped. Cinco balazos. In this chapter, Evelyn and Esteban are going about painting their new mural. Andale, we got a town to paint by 11 so we can eat menudo. I look like a ninja dressed in all black clothing, my raven black hair tied up in a ponytail, my stance alert and cautious. I was invisible, and to the government, I wasn't even here. I'm not the slow one. Esteban jumped the fence. Are you okay with this? He asked. We had this conversation before. It was a continuous and endless cycle of back and forth, hesitation and uncertainty, full of perhaps and perhaps not. But every time we were going to stop, we were reminded of the horror and boringness of our reality. We weren't surrounded by paints, cumbia beats, and the slight aroma of alcohol and cigarette ashes. We transformed from being artistic, avant-garde street heroes. In the grand scheme, our street art was still meaningless, but at least we found meaning in it a moment of clarity in our life's confusing truth. The store chosen had been abandoned three months ago. We spray painted a light coat of white. They were sugar skulls, the ones placed on altars during Dia de los Muertos, with royal blue flowers for eyes and a crown of purple lilies. We freestyled the rest of the intricate design. We swirled blues and purples, made zigzag patterns, and created pink diamonds and crosses. It was nice to get lost for a bit. Somebody's messing with our property, a raspy voice yelled. Quien los mandó? Gangs usually divided these territories, and we were smack middle of them. 
we just hadn't encountered them before, and I had forgotten that I wasn't invisible to them. We dropped our paint and ran, footsteps stopped, and loud barking chased us down the darkly lit streets, two pairs, three, four, five, or ten. My brain was too focused on finding an escape route to count the pairs of feet. Labrador, those were friendly. Husky, not likely in this weather. Doberman, I pray to every saint that they weren't Dobermans. I heard a loud whimper and crash. I turned back and saw Esteban running slightly behind me and a large blob behind the wall. I couldn't process what had just happened. Just right in over the fence, Esteban called out. I lunged toward it, digging my fingers in the iron holes and climbed. I felt my lungs burning and breathing unsteady. I yanked my arms and leg every time the cotton got caught. I felt the fence jerk and was thankful that Esteban had finally arrived. Boom. Gunshots. I smelled gunpowder and heard a click. We were going to die. Keep it up, chica, Esteban told me. Then he screamed. There was a sharp pain in my leg, and I collapsed onto the sidewalk. I couldn't move. Espera. Everything skittered to a stop, and through the darkness, I saw a battered face with a patchy beard, the type that makes you think that someone should just stop trying to grow one. My head was throbbing, and I could barely make out some of the fuzzy figures. Oh, I hope those dogs were on a leash. Why are you here? It was the same voice that ordered our attack. Just drawing? The entry wound stung, but the more I clamped my hand onto the opening, the more the paint seeped through. I heard whispers and some people running, and the word ambulancia. I instinctively jumped. Pain seeped up my leg, and a hand pushed me down in place. Que no te mueves? No moving. Got it. That seemed smart. Esteban kneeled next to me, his curly hair beaded with sweat, his usual carefree expression tense. I saw the carnage around me. The fence was folded inwards from the rate of my body. There were muddy footprints everywhere. There were bullet cases. One, two, three, four. I felt the hole in my body. Five. Everything is going to be okay. Esteban wheezed between words. It wasn't. I wasn't going to be invisible anymore.